Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. This week I went to 12th AGI conference here in Shenzhen. In this video, I would like to make a quick summary of the conference content and introduce viewers to OpenCog, a framework for integrated artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence and is defined as a program that has as smart as human across the board. A machine that can perform any intellectual task a human being can. It is different from Artificial Narrow Intelligence or ANI which specializes in one narrow area. As of 2019, we can see examples of artificial narrow intelligence in almost every field. Self-driving cars, recommendation systems for YouTube and news feeds, speech recognition and synthesis, image recognition and object detection for surveillance. The hottest algorithm for last five years or so was various flavors of deep neural networks. They significantly improved the performance of artificial narrow intelligence across various applications. Here are a few takeaways from the conference. Number one, deep neural networks can be a local minima. Despite they're powerful, but they're quite inefficient, require a lot of training data and don't generalize too well. If we had unlimited compute power, then deep neural networks could, in theory, reach human-level intelligence, since neural networks are universal function approximators. But since we don't have unlimited compute power, it is considered that neural networks as sub-symbolic AI need to be combined with symbolic system, which will provide top-level reasoning and coordination. You can think about it as reflexes and subconsciousness being a sub-symbolic system for animals and humans, and conscious thought process being a symbolic system for humans and animals. There are AGI optimists and AGI pessimists in relation to the time needed to reach human-level intelligence in the machines. According to optimistic estimations, we might see some forms of systems that exhibit logic and reasoning, albeit limited, within the next five years. And it would take us about another 10 to 20 years to get to real AGI level. It's hard to predict the future, but seeing how Google acquired DeepMind and Microsoft invested $1 billion in OpenAI, it seems that the general consensus in the industry that we will develop artificial general intelligence within my generation's lifetime. For the next thought, let's listen to Dr. Gertzel who explains that there are many paths that can take us to artificial general intelligence. There's a number of different routes that we could take to create AGI at, at the human level and, and then beyond. And it doesn't have to be only one path that gets us there. We could have a variety of different, of different AGI systems, just as we have many different kinds of, of flying machines, for example, whose operation right. is all grounded in the same aerodynamic principles. I mean, you could, you could evolve an AGI, much as human life and intelligence evolved on Earth. You could emulate the human brain closely in an AGI system. I mean, you could derive an AGI from abstract mathematical principles of intelligence, or you can engineer an AGI by, you know, building building what works, right? By combining all different sorts of knowledge. And I'm I'm hoping all of these things are going to succeed, you know, during the next next years or the next couple of decades. My own open cog approach to AGI. It's more of an engineering approach, although there are some components that 
that emulate how the brain works and some components derived from mathematical principles. On the whole, we're trying to combine multiple different you know, successful AI algorithms on a common knowledge graph toward synergetic general intelligence, getting the best of all these different types of AI. I'm optimistic this can lead to real general intelligence, but you know, we'll, we'll see what the future holds. At the very least, it's a really exciting time to be working on AGI. Things are just going, going much faster than, than ever before. Out of those different paths to AGI, Dr. Gertzel mentioned a few were discussed in presentations during the conference. There was presentation by Professor Yi Zeng, who is developing brain-inspired intelligence systems. Hari Walpola from Finland, whose curious AI company is using unsupervised learning approach to make AI systems generalize and reason better. And a presentation from Hugo Latapi, CTO of NDS Americas, now a part of Cisco, where they use NARS or non-axiomatic reasoning system combined with deep learning for various computer vision and environment monitoring applications. Dr. Gertzel mentioned OpenCog, which is open source framework for developing artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence. It combines a hypergraph database called Atomspace, which is used for representing knowledge and algorithm, PLN, a probabilistic reasoning and inference system, attention allocation mechanism, and other elements. For a top level overview of OpenCog, let's listen to Dr. Geisweiler, who develops PLN or probabilistic reasoning and inference system in OpenCog. What is OpenCog? OpenCog is a framework for implementing and experimenting with AGIs. Uh, it's open source, um, and although in itself it's not exactly an AGI, that is, you won't be able to plug it out of the box on your Mario game and, and have the system learn how to play, you can play and uh, put together something that is going to uh, do some AGI-ish things. All right, and what are the main elements of OpenCog framework? So, the central element is the atom space, which is a uh, an hypergraph in uh, knowledge store, uh, and then we have mind agents that can operate on this atom space to, for instance, uh, perform learning, reasoning, um, maybe uh, gather data from per perceptions and, and things like that. All right, and uh, how the users can get started with OpenCog? Um, so we have uh, a website, opencog.org, and from there you can get to the wiki where uh, you have uh, a lot of knowledge about the system, including tutorials. Um, we also have uh, the code is like, open source on GitHub. Uh, the best way to start is probably to go to, uh, uh, to start with the Atom Space repository, and from there um, you're going to be able to uh, I'll have the knowledge to uh, go further. Personally, I very much like this project since it might be the only open source platform for building artificial general intelligence. OpenAI has recently shifted towards more commercial applications and uh, DeepMind, well, DeepMind is part of Google. If you're interested in developing intelligent systems and robots, I encourage you to have a look at OpenCog GitHub repository. It's a research project and very much work in progress, as they clearly explain in their repository's readme file. It was mentioned during the conference that OpenCog team would welcome contributors and people who would like to use OpenCog to build practical applications. I myself will have a good look at the chatbot and conversational system of OpenCog and see if I can use it in my future robotics projects. As a final thought, I would like to say that this is really exciting times to be alive and build intelligent systems. 
we must of course exercise caution and make sure that the things we build are for the good of humanity. Well, this was it for today's video. I'll see you all next time.